So, g'day people, how you going? This is Glenn. Right, I've another lot of coins. Oh, my background fell down. The Australian ten dollar banknote. And today, I just have to sort through my Nordic coins. So, for the Nordic coins, for these countries, they include Denmark. Well, you can see Danish coin there. Yeah, Denmark, Danish, same people. Iceland, so Island, Iceland. You have Sweden, Sverige, Sverige, Sweden. You have where is another one? Uh, can I find a Norwegian coin? Uh, screw it. You have Finland. So Finland is one of the countries to that they, they, they speak a Finno Ungric or Greek language, so if the language is not an Indo European. The rest of these countries speak a German language which is uh close to English. This one has a language not related to English. And they started to issue coins in eighteen sixty four. Then you have um, Norway. So all up, we have. Um, I don't have many Norwegian coins. We have uh, five countries. So one, two, three. We have five. So it's another Swedish coin. And these coins are, are pretty standard. Uh, here's a Norwegian coin. Norway, Norway. And these all used to be part of the. Nordic Monetary Union and that used to combine most of these currencies Sweden, Denmark and Norway I think um, Finland was actually not part of that union because their coinages were actually a bit different so the last country to issue coins was Iceland so they started issuing coins in 1926 and they started issuing uh, independence coins in 1946 so after they declared independence from Denmark in 1944 so let's just have a look what I want to do is I want to separate them separate the coins that I want to keep and separate the coins that I just want to uh, get rid of because there's quite a fair number of overlaps so most of the modern Danish coins, so these ones, I actually have a, I don't have it here, but I have a Danish coin set which includes all these coins, so these ones I don't want to keep, even though I love them. Look at beautiful crowns, Margrethe II, 1977, and these ones are whole coins, these ones actually are current circulating coins, so it's actually quite big. This has a value of about one Australian dollar in exchange rate. Then we have older coins. So these ones are still legal tender, but they might no longer use. And I actually got this one, 1971, off the Danish embassy in, uh, I think, late 80s when I was doing a research project on different countries of Europe. And I rode around to all the embassies and asked for some information. And Denmark actually gave me a coin. Which is very, I'm very thankful to the Danish. They're very giving people. So I want to keep that. Uh, this one's Cook Island, so there's no relation. Uh, Swedish 10 krona. It's in very good condition, so I actually want to keep that one. So I keep them in little piles. All the ones that I don't want, I'll put over here. We can have a look later. Uh, so 50 ur, ure. This is the smallest coin used in Denmark. It has a love heart up the top. It's worth about 10 Australian cents. So, Ude. Um, these coins were actually started to be issued in 1990. When they actually reformed the coins. And if you have a look at the... Ah, this is the current one, Krona. This is the older one, you can see how... The size has actually changed because get rid of those dollars nuts. So I don't want the modern ones. 
and here's a 5 krona 967 fairly big coin and if you see a pattern here you see they usually have the coat of arms on one side and the monarch on the other so Margrief the second and these are larger than like here is the Swedish five krona and the Danish five krona these are circulated about the same time you can see the difference in the size so this coin was actually used up until 1990 so you can see really at this time there was no monetary union between all of them because all these coins are pretty much just um, just uh, Oh, um, base metal coins so and then we have the coin five coroners issued up until 2016 so all these um, older corona coins from Sweden have been demonetized you can no longer use them so it's 984 72 so and Gustav Adolf Sveri is that Gustav Kall, the 16th? Can't remember, I need another coin. Oh, here we go. So, so, oh yeah, Karl Gustav, the 16th. And 1991, so they, this, I think this was the first year. So this is the current circulating coin in Sweden. Even though the monarch's portrait has been changed a bit. And I have a few. So I only want to keep one, so I'll get rid of these. And these actually circulate as $2 coins in Australia. Although not many Australians actually go to Sweden. Let me see if I've got a $2 coin on me. Because uh, they're pretty much the same size. As far as I know, it's the only, it's the only aluminium bronze coin that's actually the same size as $2. So... Yeah, it's the same size, except for the reading. Looks like the the actual uh, whip is also the same. And as you can see, people don't really look at their coins. So I actually got these as two dollar coins. They have a pretty much an equivalent value of two dollars, so that is good. Ah, uh, fifty euro. So these ones have been demonetized because they are a different metal and they no longer use the Uda coins in Sweden so put that over there oh got another one so which one's the better uh, get rid of that all these coins are really only worth about one or two dollars maybe that older this one is worth is the most expensive one that I've got here so and they're all pretty much they're not rare and look at this portrait this portrait is Hmm, really not that good. So, I'll pause the video, I'll separate it, and we'll see what I'll come up with. Okay, let's have a look what we got. So, the series that I find the most interesting is this Norwegian series that was issued in the 1970s, 1960s, 1970s, and they're actually the animal series. So here we have a squirrel, and the one Ude. And on the obverse, there's a, uh, I think, can't remember, Ol o Octav, who, who actually issued that. And then we have a, can't remember the king's name. Then we have a rooster on the two ore. Then we have a big, is that a moose? That's quite a beautiful coin actually, it's quite nice, large coins. And if we'll put this together, the Swedish 5 Ure, uh, the Denmark, they actually did issue a large 5 Ure. Do I have it in here? I don't think I have any. Nope, I do not, but I do have some. But anyway, the five Udo is pretty much the same size. And 
that's a nice series and then I have the 10 it has it's a pretty small coin it's a little bit bigger than the uh, no no agent the Dutch 10 cents it's still a pretty small coin has a B on it and as you can see Denmark's 10 Udu is actually a bit bigger than this coin so and here we have the Swedish one that was also a small coin as well but the, none of these countries use the 10 Uda anymore then we have a bird I'm not too sure what bird looks like I can't remember I don't even know the birds of Europe uh, I know the birds of Australia but not the, not of Europe and on the back just have a portrait and who is this guy and here's the earlier coins so and it's H for I can't remember who the kings are. Maybe this one has his name on it. Oh, I love the fifth. So that's his. So it's quite a nice coin. Then the older coins I have is this uh, 1861 to order from Sweden. Quite a big coin. Not a bad coin. The earlier coins are actually a lot better because, you know, Norway, Sweden, Denmark have a, a thousand years history of issuing coins. And it's an 1892 to Ude of the current coin denomination series. Then I have various old ones. Like I have ones issued in bronze and this one is in iron. Iron's not really useful, used in coinage that much. Because the coins don't really turn out that good, and I heard that it's actually quite hard to actually use, even though it's cheap. And this one's 1947, so iron was used in Swedish coins during the Second World War, and also the First World War as well, to to um, offset the uses of copper, probably. So iron and copper are a different metal. Then another one of my favourite coins is this one. Ten Krona, 979, no longer used. Margrief II, nice portrait. That was replaced by this coin. So let me get them together. So there is that coin there. And then there is this smaller aluminium bronze. Also no reading or anything on it. It's 2007. And they're a nice coin to get. Nice, beautifully designed, actually. And the curious thing is, is that Denmark issued these two coins in similar years. So, 66, 67, they issued the same coin. And this one was used later on. This one was used beforehand. What's this? What date's this one? This one is uh, 79. So. Yeah, these would have circulated together. Not too sure what I actually put a hole in it. Maybe differentiate it from the one corona. But really, it's 25 Ude. Or maybe the 50 Ude from Sweden was used. Is that the same size? No, a little bit smaller. So, not so sure what there was a hole in there. But then I have. Other coins, I have lots of old Finnish coins. So, your two marker from Finland, if you can get this for under $10 in any grade, it's actually a good catch. These are pretty low minted coins, no, like one or two hundred thousand dollar uh, coins minted. And they're actually very expensive for the one and two marker. And as you can see, this is a large 10 penny, 1866 and large bronze coins it had no equivalent in the Avenotic countries um, do I have an older coin? no I don't have any 10 ur from that time oh well then I have some 1 ur uh, 1 penny so these, these are all named after the German currency so Fennig or Penny so 1917 so this one has a so it has a die crack going through it. 
So there's a die crack and it also has a weak strike in the centre. If we turn it over, you can see it's missing the crown at the top. So this is an independence coin, so if we get another one, so as you can see there's a crown up the top. There's the Finnish line and the coat of arms of uh, Russia. Because Finland was actually part of Russia at the time. But as you know, after the or during the First World War, Russia disintegrated and a lot of countries got independence as well. As um, Poland got independence, uh, Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania also got independence. Some other countries tried to, like Ukraine, uh, the Central Asian Republics, but uh, they were defeated by the Bolsheviks. To 1897, 25 penny, a very small coin, very thin coin. Nice coin anyway. You see it? I don't have any fives, not here. I forgot to get the half and one. Oh, maybe next time. So, during 1960s, they actually had a re-denomination. So, 100 old marker equals one new marker. So, here we have a 50 marker and a 50 penny, which had equivalent value. So, they kept the design pretty much the same. And this one's 1977. This one's 9.53. Suman Tasavalta. So Suman's the actual name of the country, Finland and Finnish. And Tasavalta probably means Finnish Republic. And if we have the last coin, so these are the last coins of the Finnish marker. These are in Swedish and Finnish. Uh, and you can see on the reverse has Sumi. I hope that's how you pronounce it, and in um, Finnish, and Finland in Swedish. Because there's actually a sizable Swedish-speaking uh, minority in the country. And the last series comes in 10, 50 penny, 1, 5 and 10 mark. And actually quite a nice series to get, actually. Then we have the last country is Iceland. So we have two currencies here. We have the second kana and the first one. So as you can see, I have the one ule oyre. Can't even pronounce it. This one is dated 1956. Then 25. So it's bronze. This is copper nickel. So as you can see, the plural and the singular are actually spelt different. The singular starts with I, the plural starts with A. And it's 1966. So it's in the 70s, they actually start to get hyperinflation. And you can see that in this coin. So this is aluminium. And this one is, oops, copper, copper nickel. Let's have a check at the dates 1969 and 1973. And this is actually the smallest coin at the time. But eventually they issued a, a smaller one, Kelowna coin, 1971. Here's the coat of arms, and they did it for protecting guardians of Iceland. You can see it on the, so he said, 10 kroners, equivalent to about 10 cents. And as you can see, there's the four guardians. So land, ocean, sky, and so sky as well. Maybe the depths. And they're pretty much the same. So Iceland coins are actually quite nice. Beautiful. Looks like sturgeon there. Eh? Not too sure. Anyway, I oh, will separate these. These are the coins that I'm going to get rid of and uh, just have an awesome coin collecting time. Thank you, Giles, with this collection because anyone can actually collect all these coins. Thank you and have an awesome coin collecting time. Bye-bye.